அஸ்ஸலாமு அலைக்கும் வரமத்துல்லாஹி வரகாத்து திஸ் இஸ் த செகண்ட் பார்ட் ஆஃப் த மைக்ரோபயாலஜி ட்யூட் ஐ ஹேவ் கிவன் யூ இன் திஸ் ட்யூட் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு ஸ்பீக் அபவுட் தி பேசிக் லெபோரட்ரி டெக்னிக்ஸ் ரிலேட்டட் டு மைக்ரோபயாலஜி இன் தட் கேஸ் டோட்டலி இஃப் யூ கன்சிடர் uh there are two to three major divisions in <coughs> this uh, basic laboratory techniques <coughs> one of the uh, important area is sterilization what is sterilization mean from a medium if you remove whether you kill or physically remove never mind all the forms of microbial life living organisms endospores whatever the microbial microbiological forms they are if you remove everything <clears throat> complete removal that is sterilization <clears throat> majorly <coughs> sterilization we try in microbiology laboratories <coughs> one of the purpose is to get a pure culture when you are growing a bacteria its culture medium should be sterilized <coughs> because certain microorganisms already existing in the culture medium can grow up then the bacteria you are introducing also will grow up microbiome microorganisms will mix together then there will not be pure cultures there like this for sterilization <coughs> there are many objectives there if a sterilization is done in a hospital it will be in an objective of uh, maintaining sanitary condition preventing infection from one individual to another individual like this sterilization with respect to microbiology is one of the very important process in the sterilization there are two types of sterilization uh, physical sterilization there and other one is uh, chemical sterilization physical sterilization is classified into four methods moist heat sterilization dry heat sterilization filtering using a membrane filter filtering and finally exposure to uv radiation all these are categorized under physical methods of sterilization after completing uh, physical methods of sterilization we will go and see Uh, what's written in chemical method of sterilization in the uh, physical method of sterilization first of all we take moist heat dis- uh, moist heat sterilization to our discussion here in moist heat sterilization we generate high temperature steam under high pressure the basic idea there is a high temperature steam normally steam you will obtain in 100 degree celsius but in moist heat method we develop a steam which is 121 degree celsius when 
the place or the object or the medium is subjected to moist heat sterilization the high hot steam will penetrate the microorganisms due to the higher heat of steam the microbial proteins will be denatured due to denaturation of microbial proteins the microorganisms will be killed this is the basic idea right to whom we can apply moist heat sterilization mean here they have given a list one it is culture media second they say temperature stable regions of fluids uh, various laboratory utensils whether culture media or regions if you consider if you consider them the most significant feature in them should be in that particular temperature 121 degrees celsius these materials should not undergo denaturation their quality should not change that mean under high temperature the culture medium should be stable the region should be stable the fluid should be stable then only it is applicable in the high temperature if the culture medium undergoes a quality losses or the fluid or regions undergo quality losses then it is not an appropriate method of uh, sterilization using moist heat method right here certain conditions are there one condition as i told you the temperature 121 degree celsius to build up 121 degree celsius inside the uh, device called autoclave autoclave and pressure cooker are uh, very near near devices autoclave is specially designed for a microbiological purpose remember the real pressure cooker will be having a pressure gauge fixed to it in autoclave also a pressure gauge will be fixed on it so such a device autoclave that only we use here to develop 121 degree celsius steam inside the autoclave or inside the pressure cooker pressure is elevated pressure is elevated the pressure is brought to 1 atm actually 1.02 atm okay 1.02 atm uh although it seems to be a small value 1.02 no if you convert it to pascals it will be a bigger value another method of measuring the pressure it is a british scale a 15 psi that is pounds per square inch 15 pounds per square inch if you develop that pressure inside the autoclave you will be getting steam of 121 degree celsius then that is sufficient to denature the protein of uh the microorganisms and kill them how long we have to uh, expose these 
culture medium or regions or fluids or utensils in autoclave mean the recommended duration is 15 minutes for 15 minutes if you keep they will be uh, killed in 15 minutes although all the microorganisms are killed uh, prions prions will not be uh, killed in that uh, temperature in that pressure so actually uh, we have to remove the prions uh, moist heat method is not effective okay we then we have to go for some filtering method to uh, remove the prions the only thing it is uh, prions are not very common not very common so you don't we don't want to worry about uh, i have uh, applied moist heat method uh, will all the microorganisms be killed what about if prions are uh, surviving me prions are uh, not such components to uh, survive in every place we go around. So here you are painted what are the components that are sterilized, uh, culture media, solutions, syringes, needle, healthcare instruments, okay. Mainly thing it is they have to withstand high temperature, they have to withstand high pressure, okay. When we take glasswares, right, in the case of glasswares, if the glassware, glassware or anything, now if we take culture medium or solution, steam will be penetrating through the culture medium, steam will be penetrating through the uh, solution. But if you go for syringes, needles, these healthcare instruments like things, steam cannot penetrate them. So, if steam is contacting all their surfaces only, moist heat method will be a perfect sterilization method for those types of components. Needles are small, so the opportunity for them lacking the exposure is very low. Syringes have a chance. We have to remove the piston and the container of the syringe and put them separately. Let them uh, well come in contact with the steam say one surface of them come in contact with the steam other surface doesn't come in contact with the steam in that case what will happen that other part that is not exposed to steam could accommodate microorganisms without being killed the steam cannot pass through the glass and reach the other side and kill them also. So it is very important if you are sterilizing glassware, plastic items like things, all the surfaces should be exposed to uh, steam. Then only it will be a successful method. Okay, that is regarding the moist heat sterilization. The major method we try to uh, sterilize glassware and metal materials is dry heat method. In the dry heat method, you are pointed here glassware, petri dishes, pipettes, uh, inoculation loops, inoculation needles, scalpels like materials are uh, sterilized. If you take glassware, Petri dishes and pipettes. 
for them we go for hot air oven method for inoculating loops inoculating needles scalpel like ones metals no heat stable metals if they are heat stable metals then the method suitable is direct flaming holding them directly in the bunsen flame so if you go for the order first of all they choose direct flaming what do you have to do so on the bunsen burner take the inoculating loop or inoculating needle or scalpel hold them on uh, the bunsen flame until it becomes red hot if it is becoming red hot in that place all the microorganisms will be burnt away no any microorganism will be there after surviving but on the heating time if this metal material melt or something then it will be a failure method heat stable metals but thing is this inoculating loop or inoculating needle or scalpel like materials they are made with heat stable metal considering their sterilization otherwise there's no point of view okay make by making a inoculating needle second it is incineration incineration is a is a is an, is an oven okay is an oven we burn we burn okay it is also a burning method completely burning hospital wastes like things are not good to uh, throw on out to the environment they can infect other people in those places we put those waste materials inside a large oven burn them even we don't allow their waste gases to come out it is properly filtered out that kind of a method incineration but incineration is not generally practiced in a microbiological laboratory microbiological laboratory one it tries it is direct flaming other one it tries it is hot air sterilization it is an oven sterilization microorganisms will be burnt or oxidized at a higher temperature and hot air sterilization okay to whom it is applicable mean mainly glasswares petri dishes Uh, flask beakers bottles uh, glassware thermally stable glassware when you are doing it you have to wrap each of the glassware with newspaper or a paper well wrap it and keep it inside an oven that oven is not the oven that uh, we are using at home okay it is a baking oven that's not the right one hot air oven is there it is mainly noticed in the laboratories as i told you uh, it will be noticed in the laboratories mainly i have noticed it in the university laboratories uh, i have not noticed them in the school laboratories you know the standard of school laboratories though they have less facilities that available facility is also not used by the schools to give the students the best uh, experience of learning okay leave that one how long we keep these devices in the hot air oven 120 under 127 degrees celsius you have to place it for 2 hours that is the uh, hot air sterilization right breaking that i am coming to the next heading pasteurization actually pasteurization 
is not a sterilization technique. Complete removal of microorganisms is not expected in pasteurization. The milk you buy from the food city, supermarkets, the bottled one, the packeted one, they are mainly pasteurized milk. Packet milk, highland packet milk you buy, pasteurized milk. Rich life, pasteurized milk. Okay? Pasteurization's main objective is destroying destroying food spoiling microorganisms without damaging the taste or texture or nutritional quality of the food destroying okay in sri lanka some days ago highland milk company was selling bottled milk and on the bottle i have seen it was written sterilized milk sterilized milk milk is sterilized sterilized milk means it has been applied moist heat method moist heat method has been applied on it if moist heat method is applied on it there will be taste change texture change nutritional content change will occur right but if you apply pasteurization without causing serious damages to taste or texture or nutrient you can uh, remove the microorganisms, mainly those who cause spoilage. Okay, this pasteurization technique was first introduced by Louis Pasteur. When Louis Pasteur was introducing this, he applied it for beer. Later only, it is uh, shifted to milk. In pasteurization, food spoiling microorganisms will be killed. Pathogenic microorganisms will be killed. Okay. First time when they were practicing pasteurization, their objective was destroying mycobacterium tuberculosis in the milk. That was their main target. So, food spoiling microorganisms are killed. Pathogenic microorganisms are killed. But, spores of food spoiling microorganisms will not be killed by pasteurization. Due to that reason, those endospores can again grow into food spoiling microorganisms and again spoil the food due to this reason. Pasteurized milk or pasteurized food should be kept in refrigerator so during pasteurization food spoiling microorganisms are killed pathogenic microorganisms are killed endospores of food spoiling bacteria are not killed they can grow and spoil the food so to prevent their growth we are keeping them under refrigerator. Okay. In the 
pasteurization there are three methods there one we call high temperature short time method here the food is the milk is kept under 72 degree celsius for 15 seconds second low temperature low time method lt lt method here the food is kept in 63 degree celsius for 30 minutes nowadays another method they try that is uht method it is a flashing method 140 degree celsius steam the milk will be exposed only for 5 seconds okay and uht method will be killing the endospores because temperature is 140 degrees celsius if the temperature is above 121 degrees celsius the spores will be killed so if you apply htst method or lt lt method pasteurization refrigeration is compulsory uht method if you apply refrigeration is not compulsory the rich life highland milk packets milk uh, that box like one you buy from the uh, supermarkets are mainly treated under uht the difference between uht method and uh, other method it is uh, after uht application as the endospores are killed they can be uh, placed in the room temperature in a sealed condition in a sealed condition okay when you buy rich life on the in on the box it is written after opening refrigerate it if you cut open that box now from the air endospores can enter and they are they can grow they can spoil the food so this kind of a story is there uh, under pasteurization so rest of the ones inshallah i will record it and send you in the next video okay so allah ta'ala assalam alaikum